how to quote for a new boiler. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video I want to show you step by step how to quote for a new boiler including actually doing the quote, how to get terms and conditions for your customers, also how to survey the job correctly so that you choose the correct boiler for the customer. I'm going to show you which boiler that you should choose. I'll give you my opinion on what boiler to choose. Um, yeah, let's go and have a look. So first of all, preparation. So what do you need to know before you even go to the property? Product knowledge. So installation instructions for particular boilers or brands. Get to know the boilers that you're going to install and how to install them correctly. So that's one thing you need to do. Also, what tools do you need when you're going to go do a quote? You may need a flow cup so you can test the water, make sure that the flow, um, also you might want to check the pressure, you need a pressure gauge for that, but the flow to make sure you've got the right flow so you can size, if you're going to install a combi boiler, so you can size the combi boiler correctly. There's no point fitting a 40 kilowatt boiler if the house only has say 10 liters a minute because you could fit a 24 or a 28 and that'd be perfect for that property. Um, so that's one thing to check. One thing you'll always need is a tape measure to make sure that the boiler is going to fit clearances, etc. You may also may also want to use some sort of digital measure, uh, measure, measurement machine or um, this is a Disto D1110. So if you're gonna size a room for radiators or if you're gonna size the property, you might want to do a heat loss on the property so that you know you're getting the right size boiler. I've quoted for hundreds and hundreds of boilers over the years and the most popular one that I've been to, to do quotes for is your typical like three bedroom semi style property. So in this video, that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna base it on a three bedroom semi or the, the typical three bedroom semi. But if you've got any requests for different sides of properties or different outputs, etc., please put some comments below and we, maybe we'll cover that in another, in another video. So there's things that we need to take into consideration when we're going to when we're going to do a quote. One is the flow of the water, another one is the gas. How far away is the gas pipe? And if we put a bigger boiler in, do we need to update the gas? That's a showstopper, really. If if maybe sometimes you cannot update the gas, um, condensate as well. How are you going to run the condensate? Also, a question that I get asked quite a lot is, will this boiler be big enough? for my property. Now, one thing is a combi boiler is nearly always gonna be miles too big for a typical three bedroom semi. A typical three bedroom semi might need about nine or 10 kilowatts for the heat inside. And what I'll do, I'll just show you, quickly do um, a heat loss calculation now for a radiator in the lounge so you can see how big a radiator in a lounge would normally be. If we have a look in the Trade Help app, this is a free app for your phone. It's got a section where you can calculate your room sizes, so you know what size radiators to install. So if we click on the left hand section, it brings up a full section here, and there's all sorts of different tools in here. So you've got your satisfaction note, your waiver forms, risk assessment, power flush waiver form etc etc there's loads of stuff in this but if you go down to heating calculators and if you go on the heat loss calculator so we can use this now to size the radiators for the room so if we click on living room 21 degrees 5 meters be 4 meters and average height 2.4 meters and sheltered or exposed, so I'm just going to put average in there. Window type, normally we'll have double glazing nowadays. And once you've put that in there, click on get results. 
and that'll give you the results there so the maximum watts that you need there is 2350 watts 2350 watts works out about 2.35 kilowatts and i've done that on the high side so normally it'd be less than that anyway and if you want you could go around all the property and you could measure the individual rooms on the app there's different boxes and it tells you the different rooms so it's really easy to to do the full heat loss if you wanted to and it is free as well um, just to bear in mind then now so you've done all your heat loss that's about 10 kilowatts we'll say it's 10 kilowatts for argument's sake if you have a look at your installation manual this is the ideal vogue manual if we have a look in the ideal vogue manual on the lowest output on a 26 i don't know if you can see that but on a 26 kilowatt boiler it'll actually give you 18.1 kilowatts for the central heating so we know that that's going to be ample so even the smallest combi boiler is going to be big enough for a three bedroom semi-detached in normal case obviously you have to work that out yourself um, the next thing we need to do we need to work out the water and decide what uh, decide what size boiler we want and also you're gonna to have to look at the gas and the condensate as well but uh, the gas mainly but so flow rate so you go to your tap and you measure your flow rate and we'll say for for this video we'll say that we're getting say we'll, we'll say we're getting 14 liters a minute so now if we look at the different boilers that we could choose we could go for a 26 kilowatt Vogue. It's actually 26.1 kilowatts on hot water. That would give us 10.6 liters a minute at a 35 degree rise. So as I've said before, if you've got 10 degrees coming in, if your flow rate is, is set to 10.6, so if you, if you throttled the cold down from your 14, if you throttled it down to 10.6 litres a minute, you'd get a 35 degree rise. So 10 degrees coming in, you'd get 45 degrees to your taps. So that might not be might not be good enough. You might want to you might want to use more of that cold water inlet flow. So if we have a look at the 32, how the 32 would work is you'd get 13.1 litres a minute. At a 35 degree rise but what that would mean is if you had the tap slightly lower then you might get a slightly better rise as well and you could also throttle that down you could go for the bigger output so you could go all the way up to the 40 kilowatt boiler and that'll give you 16.4 liters a minute at a 35 degree rise but i would say that in this case we're going to say that that one's too big and, and I'll explain the reasons for that later on in the video as well. So if we look at the 32 kilowatt ideal Vogue, we've got a 32 kilowatt Vogue, that'll give us 13.1 litres a minute, as we've said at the 35 degree temperature rise. And that sort of matches this 14, very, very close to it. So I would say that that's the right size boiler for this really. Um, you could go for the bigger size, one if you did go for the bigger size the boiler would be more expensive you'd also need a much bigger gas supply as well so it may mean that you've got to run 28 millimeter gas pipe so that's something to take into consideration i actually had a, a message from somebody on whatsapp the other day and they'd installed a 40 kilowatt baxi and baxi had been out and they'd actually cut the boiler off because the gas was undersized so that's some to take into consideration we need to make sure that the gas pipe is the correct size so as i say the 32 kilowatt is going to give you 13.1 liters a minute at a 35 degree temperature rise if you turn the tap down a little bit so some taps might not even they may not even give you the 13 liters so some taps might be lower than that which will mean the temperature of the water will be hotter so this to me for this situation would be a good choice but as i say it's not set in stone and different people will have different opinions and please put your opinion below and let me know what you would do in this situation now what i'm going to do i just want to have a, a little look at this 
the gas. So we're just going to go to the app for gas pipe sizing and just look at that. If we go back into the app and we go to gas pipe sizing, we can put all the details in here. So if we put 32 kilowatt boiler, length of pipe in meters. So if we say roughly gas meters 10 meters away, or there's 10 meters of pipe, eight elbows, one T, and we'll put 15 millimeter pipe to start with. And this just shows you that 15 millimeter pipe wouldn't be good enough because we're only allowed maximum one millibar drop on the installation pipe work, on the gas pipe work. So now if we type in the 22 millimeter, we can see that that is better. And the pressure drop on the pipe work now is 0 0.69 millibar. So we know that that would be suitable. None of this is exact, and I would advise that you learn how to do pipe sizing. So look in your Viper book, or look in whatever gas pipe sizing book that you've got, and learn about pipe sizing. Also the apps, the apps are really good because they'll give you an idea. And obviously if you're close, then you might upsize it to the next size up. But the apps, as I said, the apps are really good. What, what are you trying to achieve? So this, this is the important thing, one millibar. And over the pipe work, we only want to have maximum one millibar drop. So that's, when your gas is going through the pipe work, there's a resistance there. And so if you put 20 millibar in here, the maximum we should get here should be 19 millibar. And that's, that's what, so that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, if, if the pipe sizing, if this were too small here, we might end up with 16 here. So I went, I've been to one a few weeks ago and it were down at, I think it was 15 millibar. Um, 15 millibar here when, when we were gas, when we were um, checking it at the inlet of the boiler. You do need to read the installation instructions for the boiler. Some manufacturers will say that you can have an additional amount because of their gas valve or their pipe work in the boiler. So that's something to check. But what it doesn't mean, I've seen some manufacturers say you can have 15 millibar at the boiler. That doesn't mean that you can have 15 millibar working pressure what it means is it will work down to 15 millibar so in in extreme weather when sometimes the the grid the the pressure might drop slightly the boiler will work down to that pressure 15 millibar or 14 i think some of them say 14 actually i think it's 14 um, but as i say check in the installation instructions for that so what, what, we, what we need to know, what we need to make sure is that we're sizing this pipe work correctly. And some of the manufacturers have now started to at-risk boilers and turn them off if this pipe sizing isn't correct. So it's very, very important that you size this correctly. So we know now for this particular boiler that we're doing, we're going to put a 22 millimeter gas pipe to it. So we've sized the gas correctly now so on this particular job 22 millimeter pipe for the gas is, is the correct size so that we we know that we're going to achieve what it not point i think we're not point six nine loss over that pipe work that's with no other appliances connected so as i said before if you've got a hob or a cooker or a gas fire then obviously you need to take them into consideration as well it may it may mean in some circumstances, even on a 32 kilowatt boiler, you might need to put some 28 millimeter piping, but you need to do whatever you need to do to install it correctly. We've also got, we've got us cold water coming in, 14 liters a minute. We've got us hot water coming out, 13.1. Roughly, this, this could be, this might be a little bit lower this might be a little bit higher, whatever, roughly. So that's what we've roughly got with that. Now what we need, we need there's other things we need to take into consideration. And one of them, a very important part is, 
is the flu. So we need to look now, look at fluing options. As for fluing, you need to check the installation instructions of the boiler that you've chosen and make sure that you've got all your clearances. Now, again, please remember a lot of these boilers now, they've got long, long warranties, 10 year warranties, some of them. And if, if any of this stuff is wrong, then it may invalidate the warranty for your customer. So you need to make sure that you're installing these correctly. And on the ideal logic and on the ideal Vogue, one thing you've got to make sure, and this comes up a lot in the ideal group on Facebook, um, but you've got to make sure that you've installed the flu correctly. And what that means with an ideal logic and an ideal Vogue, you're not allowed to have any white on shore. The rubber part of it is actually the seal and it seals the two flu bits together. So on the flu, there's a plastic bit and there's a metal bit and that rubber seal seals that together and it's got like a ring around it where the rubber seal goes on. So it's important on the ideals that you don't have no white on shore. But as I say, it's clearly, it's clearly in the installation instructions. It's also on the box when you get the flu and it's also stamped on the flu. So, so Ideal's tried the best to, to show you how to do that correctly. So that's us flu, we've got us flu. What else do we need to know? We've got, let's have a look now. We've got us flow and return for heating. So if we have a look on the flow on the boiler, or first of all, this was a request from um, from one of the trainees, they wanted to know what what pipes do what underneath the boiler. Now you would need to have a look in the installation instructions because different boilers have different pipe work configurations, but most of the common boilers, so Ideal, Baxi, Worcester, Valen, mo most of the brands have a standard DIN, which would be flow, hot, gas, cold, return, and that's how you'd know. But as I say, you'd have to check the installation instructions. I just know because I've done, I've done more boilers than I care to remember now, to be honest. So going back to his flow pipe, so that's a central heating flow. That's gonna to go to the radiators. It may be, depending on how much money you've got in the job, how much margin you've got in the job, may be that you're gonna fit a day rater. You may give the customer a choice of fitting one of them. This is a Spyrotech one. Spyrotech's done a really good video showing you how they work. So please click and have a look at that. I've no, I've definitely got no connection with Spyrotech. And then we've got the return. So the central heating return. And this is where we would put a filter. So we'd need to quote and we'd need to price to put a filter on. And, and I would do that on every install. So all the boilers that I install will have a filter on. After we've installed this, oh, we've got another thing, another thing to point out, which is the condensate. With regards to the condensate, always follow the installation instructions. Now, please, please bear in mind, these instructions have recently changed it for most manufacturers. And whereas some people used to update the the pipe and we might put inch and a half fruit wall to drain instead of lagging. Obviously a lot of people don't like to see the lagging on the outside. A lot of manufacturers or most manufacturers, that's not suitable. You must fit a 32 millimeter pipe and lag it. And that lagging must come all the way on the outside and internal as well into the property, which I find a little bit bizarre, but we have to follow the installation instructions. And as I say, that's not all manufacturers, that's certain manufacturers. So you need to check the manufacturer instructions for the boiler that you're gonna install. Also, one thing to check is that the lagging is the correct lagging. Now I know for a fact that this is gonna be getting picked up by certain governing bodies because the lagging that we've used in the past hasn't been suitable. So you need to check that the lagging is suitable. So for instance, I personally used to use class O lagging because that's what we were told to use. That's what I've used. And apparently 
that now would not be it's not allowed you would need it needs to be a waterproof lagging so again you'd need to check that for yourself standard class o lagging i believe would need to be painted and then painted again before um with i think it's you have to paint it within seven days so you paint it and then paint it again last thing i'm going to do is when i'm working on a customer's property is paint the lagging and then go back and paint it so you need to make sure that you get the correct solution for the lagging one product one product that's been brought out recently is the condensate pro and that is really worth looking at because that's already treated so it's already got a coating on the lagging and a few of the manufacturers now have approved this for use so again check out the instructions at the time and and these things evolve so as i say it's very important that you check out the instructions at the time another thing we need to consider is the controls so the controls now on nearly all boiler installations will need to be updated because they need to comply with the boiler plus standards so that's something to consider maybe that you fit an internet control for the customer so they can use it on a smartphone or it may be you use a standard standard control like an on off control but it would need to be one that complies or conforms with the current boiler plus standard so just check that out and make sure you install something that is correct what we're going to do now we're going to have a look at the quoting and then i'm going to i'm going to go through the quote show you the quote go through some pricing and then at the end after that I'll also go through some different options of boilers as well. On the on the quotes, we're going to go through the quotes. There's also it's got a detailed quote on there. Also with these, it comes with terms and conditions, so that's something that's really really good. And also there's there's waiver forms as well. And also like if you're doing power flushing or changing systems there's forms for that as well just so that you can um so you're not going to be blamed for for system faults that's not that's not your not your fault really um and there's also invoices as well the satisfaction notes as well so you can get customers to sign that as well if you wanted to um so yeah let's have a look at the quoting so we're going back into the app so this is the trade help app we're clicking into quotes and when we have a look on the quotes there's there's a few different options quite a few different options so you can do bathrooms on this you can do electrical stuff but we're going to look at the comprehensive replacement and then we're going to look at gas combination boiler and then we're going to click into boiler and then on this we put in the house type so we just click down on that and it'll give us an option so semi-detached house and then we've got different options as we go through on this and this will populate a quote for us as i said these are an easier option than this so you don't have to do a detailed one so now we can choose the boiler so if we type in the search bar the boiler that we want so in this particular quote we're gonna we're looking for an IT, ideal vogue and it's a 32 kilowatt so we just click on that and then boiler position so in this in on this particular one i'm just we can put whatever we want but same same room same location and then we can select boiler location so on this quote i've just put loft choose what flue we want so you have different options you can put a plume kit on if you wanted to you can also add accessories for the flue you can click on new pipe work so if you've got some new gas pipe work to run you can click on that click on meter union condensate termination you can click on that and you can click on the type where it's connecting to so for external gully how long it's going to be type of filter or what filter you require and on the list you can click on to the list choose the filter click on power flush 
choose how many radiators. All this will populate a price at the end as well. If you're in an area that requires a scale reducer, then you can also add that onto the quote as well. And then it gives you the option, so you can choose the one that you require for the job, whichever one you prefer. And then we can click on Review Quote. That gives us a materials total. If we click on Next, and then we click on View, and it'll give us the detailed quote for the customer. And it'll give you a breakdown of what's included on the quotation as well. And you can add more, you can add more things to this. You can also adjust the pricing by setting your own rates. But it, it tells the customer what, what they should expect, it tells them about filters. There's also terms and conditions in there. So that shows your customer that you've got terms and conditions, also protects you as well. As you see there, it's got a full detailed terms and conditions. There's also the standard cancellation form that, the, that you have to give the customer. You can also do a waiver form in there. I don't know if you can see that with light, but there's a waiver form in there. You can also get customer to sign it. So if you're going to install the boiler within the standard cooling off period, if you like, then you can get them to sign that as a waiver form if it's an emergency and it needs doing quickly. So it's a very detailed quotation and what, what that will do, it will produce your parts list as well if, if you want it to. You can also do the quick the quick option so you, so you don't need to go through all them questions if you, if you don't want to. But that takes me back to my British gas days where we used to type in all different stuff in all different boxes. It's then it's clear and it's detailed to customer so customer knows what to expect and what they're getting and it's very very professional as well and also it's got all the terms and conditions on it so it's, it's good it protects you as well um, if you've got any questions with that with quoting then please as always put some comments below and now I wanted to talk about obviously on this video I've gone on to the ideal Vogue and which boiler is best and which boiler should you choose? What I would personally, my opinion is that choose a brand that you have a connection with. For instance, you know the reps or if there's any issues, you can contact the reps. Because at some point, if you're installing lots of boilers, you will have some issues. There's no doubts about it. And if you phone customer services for any of the brands, then it could take a little bit longer to get the help that you need so if you get a good relationship with, with one of the boiler reps then personally I would say you know install their boilers but choose the boilers that you want to install for instance the cheaper end you might want to install the cheaper end of boilers with, with lower warranties that might be the market that you're in it may be you want to choose a more expensive um, boiler option personally I tend to choose the boilers with a 10 year warranty. I normally choose boilers with stainless steel heat exchangers and that's only because they're more forgiving to muck and sludge in the system. So that, that's just a good choice, but you might, you might prefer an aluminium heat exchanger. Aluminium heat exchangers normally are quieter. So that's, that's another option for you. So, so some of the boilers, for instance, the Ideologic, is is fairly quiet um, the Vogue is probably a little bit noisier because it's a stainless steel heat exchanger most importantly of all what I would say and what I do now on every single job is I would flush the system always always flush the system on every job that I do and now I also prove that I've flushed the system and that I've flushed it correctly and what I use is I use the AD Pro Check now and I've done a video on that, so I'm not going to go over it again in this. But what I do is use this in front of the customer. So I'll take a sample of the water from the heating system in front of the customer. Then the customer can see that you're not trying to trick them. 
and then you can go through the process of the water test in front of the customer and then you can get instant results and if it fails then you can you can do more and you can rectify it um, obviously if you flushed it correctly it's not going to fail then you'll get a certificate to say that it's been it's been done correctly that can then be emailed to the customer as well so what I do I take a snapshot of that result I add it to my final invoice for customer so that in years to come I've also got proof on a picture on the invoice that we did a water sample and it were installed correctly so that's just something for you to consider the new British standards now says that we need to be checking the water when we do new boilers and also on boiler services so that's what I'm using at the moment I'm also going to use I'm going to do a video shortly on the Fernox um, water test as well so we'll have a look at that and we'll see what we think to that one I'm not affiliated with any brands at all and no brands no, no, not AD not Sentinel Sentinel I think is a good brand Fernox Fernox as well so any other quality manufacturers I, I would I would recommend and I wouldn't be I wouldn't you know I'm not unhappy about using any of them um, also same with the boiler manufacturers in um, next week or week after I'm actually fitting a Valen boiler I've, I've not fitted one for probably about 15 years um, definitely a long time anyway so what I'll, I'll try and do a video on that so if you've got any questions about Valen boilers please ask them in comments below and I'll try and include them um, try and answer them questions in the video as well um, yeah I'm bubbling on a little bit now um, I think that's it for this video for anybody who's got to end of this video thank you so much for watching and as always please like share um, comment all that good stuff um, re really appreciate it and yeah thanks very much